so I decided to make a dice tray. My dice are pretty big. So I got some wood, uh, some just some smaller pieces of wood from the hobby store. You can see here they're just some random pieces of wood that I grabbed. Glue, uh, some red felt, and uh, and I just measured my dice box that I normally do my roll my dice into. Um, so it's not like it's a really complicated project, but uh, once I had those measurements, then I measured my wood and made a nice straight line. This took a couple of times. I ended up erasing a couple of times, but eventually I got out my little T-square thing and I drew a straight line. So I highly recommend if you have a T-square, dig it out and use it because it will uh, save you from having to erase a bunch of lines when you draw at some weird angle. And I tried sawing. I got a little hacksaw -y thing. I sawed a little bit on it, but it just um, wasn't going quite as well as I would have liked. Uh, I don't know if I need a better hacksaw, I suppose. So what I ended up doing is just getting out a knife and putting that metal edge of my ruler up against the knife and then just kind of like lightly scoring it over and over and over. And as you can see where I'm at here, I've actually been doing it for a while. But I'm actually scoring into it until I was able to actually cut all the way through that soft wood. I think that's really soft pine. Um, that, like I said, I picked it up at the hobby store. So, or the craft section of a, I don't remember. I, just, it, I got it super cheap somewhere that uh, that sells like crafting supplies, whether it was the hobby store or what. But so what you see me doing here, I'm just you get, literally using my dice to kind of measure the uh, size and the space inside of the box. Here I'm just kind of piecing it all together to make sure that the pieces of wood that I grabbed were actually going to give me enough uh, movement to, to actually give me a, a good enough fit. So I kind of drag it back and forth and make sure that uh, once I add the felt and stuff in there that I want to make sure that it's good to go. I wanted to put a little lip at the bottom just to kind of kick the dice out so it doesn't like land at the bottom and then just be at the bottom of the uh, dice tower, the dice roller. So I just cut a little tiny piece and um, put it there. And I just kind of scored down the sides. For this here, the my little saw thing actually worked pretty good. And this is, I picked this up literally for a dollar at the dollar store, this particular saw. So it goes to tell you the quality of that saw. But I did manage to get all the pieces cut and uh, everything was pretty much fitting as expected. Had a lot of uh, burrs and stuff and the getting us some saw paper or sandpaper and just sanding away for a while. And then I went and clamped my front and my back together. That way when I drilled my holes that they would go all the way through. And just in case I lost track of the front and back here, I made a little line, but uh, I didn't actually take the clamp off until actually after I had drilled the holes all the way through. Because my plan was to actually put dowels through, and that's what I ended up doing. I put dowels through in, uh, in uh, for various uh, spacing. So as the dice would hit, they'd be forced to go one direction or, or the other. And once again, I'm just using the dice here to pretty much just measure up what I needed. Because this dice tower is specific to these large oversized dice. So I wanted to make sure that everything fit right. Um, I kind of just used some plans, but all the plans and all the dice towers that you could buy are for these, you know, normal size dice. And I actually prefer to use these big dice. So for a dice tower, I have to construct my own. So you can see here I am just, uh, once again, lining things up. I get one of my dowels out and the first dowel I thought was going to be way too big. So I got a dug around and found a smaller dowel. And uh, the smaller dowel, I was able to kind of line things up and they would fit through. And so that means the dice would be able to roll through as they flipped back and forth. And uh, yeah, that worked out really well. I just made sure that everything was fitting properly. And then I just started trying to figure out where to make my holes. I knew I would have to go like three holes on top, two in the middle and three on the bottom, which is the pattern I ended up with. Like I said, I didn't end up taking that clamp off until actually after I had everything drilled. Um, you can see that I got some little dots on the on the, the board there. And then I made new dots and circled the, the new dots to show myself what dots were actually the dots I was going with. And once I had that figured out, 
and I was able to go ahead and uh, make the rest of my dots. Um, I ended up pulling the clamp off real quick just to draw the lines, make sure everything was lined up where I wanted it to be. But before I dr drilled, I put the clamp or I clamped the wood back together. So when I did actually stop several times and grab the dice and put the dice down and made sure that they were actually going to fit um, in the spaces before I uh, were to ever even try drilling or anything like that. And as, yeah, and it just and as I was satisfied with a particular dot, and then I drew a circle around it because that was one of the dots that was going to be a good dot. So I ended up, like I said, it was a. I ended up with two on top, three in the middle, and then two on the bottom, which was the opposite pattern that I thought I was going to start with. But it just made more sense to do it that way. And that way, it made sure that the dice were always going to get. I'd get, they'd get dro dropped in, they'd hit something, they'd flip, they'd hit something, they'd flip, and they hit that bottom lip and then roll out. So even like a, a four-sided dice uh, hits the bottom, you know, and it still flips over one last time before it, it slides out. And they do slide out pretty nicely, even those four-siders. So I went ahead and drilled everything through, like I said, with that clamp on it. And then once I had all my holes drilled and I used, uh, you know, a, a regular drill, then I made sure that all, that my little uh, dowels could poke through and then uh, sanded them again. I was going to cover the whole thing with felt, like I mentioned earlier, but I still wanted to sand off and just get the little rough edges off because when I drilled through, kind of pushing through and it, uh, it uh, kind of split the wood up around the holes but it wasn't a real big deal and some some light sanding fixed it so as you can see here i am literally just gluing the sides on uh, nothing too exciting or crazy here i uh, measured it up and glued it on so it wasn't like it was real real difficult to do there uh, it took me a little bit and i used uh, elmer's glue and not like hot glue just because i wanted the ability to if i you know, got the glue on and got things put into place and realized that I made some kind of mistake that I could, you know, just pull it off, wipe the glue off and then, you know, fix my mistake. Whereas with hot glue, I would be pretty, pretty committed. Plus you have to work pretty fast when you're using hot glue. So I started with this one little clamp I had. Uh, I put a board across and the, tried to clamp it on down, but uh, it, uh, I discovered that one clamp wasn't working. So I went ahead and uh, swapped out to another clamp that I had. And uh, so yeah, once everything was dry, I just took some rubber cement and just painted the whole thing with rubber cement. Rubber cement takes a while to dry. So it's kind of for forgiving in that way. You can take your time and thoroughly coat everything with the rubber cement. And then I, obviously the plan was once everything was thoroughly coated with the rubber cement, then I would go ahead and also thoroughly coat the uh, the felt with the rubber cement. That way, both the rubber cement and the wood, or the felt and the wood, had the rubber cement on it. And then I literally just started uh, molding it into place, uh, pressing it into place, smoothing it slowly as I went. Like I said, the rubber cement does take some time to dry, so you you do have time to. Uh, to work with it and make sure things are smooth and if you get a little wrinkle you can kind of pull it back up and uh and just kind of work it it slowly into place you're not you know in a, such a time rush that you're you know trying to um do it before it dries now i'm just doing the inside here because i will uh i need me to put attach the top put the dowels in and attach the lip and whatnot but obviously the inside needs to be done first so I put all once I got all of that in there, then I actually um, put it on the ins on the uh, inside piece as well. But as you can see, I didn't cut or, or, or measure or cut beforehand. I got it in, got it to fit, got it smoothed out, and then I used my scissors and I cut off the excess there because it just was uh, simpler for me to uh, do it that way. But uh, and then uh, kind of go back through and make sure everything is pushed and pressed into place. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's, the whole project was pretty much uh, kind of a feel it out as I went. I didn't like I said have a pattern or I had a kind of a vague plan in my head that I was going to make a you know a uh, a shoot for the dice to fall through when you know and use the dowels. 
Although right away, I had actually considered using like the uh, sloped ramps, um, which I had done in a previous dice tower for some smaller dice. But I just wanted those dice to be flipping back and forth and not necessarily sliding down ramps. That way they'd be a little bit more random, um, at least with those bigger dice without having to have a huge, massive tower. Um, was my, that was my goal there. Um, could have used just a sharper pair of scissors. Those scissors that I was using there made a nice jagged cut for me, so I wasn't real happy with that. But uh, I think I eventually found her another pair of scissors and kind of got that cleaned up a little bit. But uh, definitely could uh, could have used a better pair of scissors there cutting. So if I had had if I was to do this again, I would definitely get get a better pair of scissors that was going to cut that felt nicer. Um, there's a a reason then, I guess, that my grandma always didn't want me to uh, cut paper with her good fabric scissors because uh, this is what happens when you cut paper and wood and popsicle sticks and everything else with your uh, with your scissors. All of a sudden, they won't cut something as simple as felt. So, um, and you can't really sharpen scissors either. I've actually tried it with. Uh, supposedly, you could take some aluminum foil and snip, snip, snip through the aluminum foil, but it didn't do anything for me. So. But and I'm just kind of trimming it up, cleaning things up a little bit, and just working on getting everything just as uh, trimmed up and cleaned up as I as I can. Um, and it got pretty good. Like I said, said I wish I'd had a better pair of scissors because that uh, that was the one part of the project that where I kind of things didn't work out quite as well as I would have liked. And that's simply because of the scissors. Um, so I went ahead and, like I said, uh, attached the, well, first I um, um, obviously put the uh, glue on, or the rubber cement on both sides and then attached the felt. And then I glued the uh, top to the bottom. And then I just started pushing the, the dowels through with a bit of glue on them and then cutting them off there, as you can see. So I ended up with this pattern where it took you drop uh, Drop a dice down there, it, uh, it's forced to flip one direction or the other as it goes. And of course, here's that lip. Um, I had left a little bit of the uh, felt loose, or hadn't uh, rubber cemented it down completely. That way I could just have a continuous piece of, of uh, felt and not have to um, added felt to that lip and then you know, have a little bump there or something. So, um, so yeah, then I just rubber cemented that all all into place and then kind of like tilted it up slightly and then added a little bit of a spacer which i then clamped into place with some glue and so forth so once i had all that done it was pretty simple to kind of finish up the project at that point i actually took the time and cut out these pieces of felt after my uh scissor uh um fun and then uh, just kind of molded everything into place. And that was a pretty much it for the project. Here I'm using a popsicle stick to kind of do some final cleanup. And uh, yeah, that was pretty much it for the project. There was no, uh, it wasn't real complicated at all. Well, thank you for watching. I do appreciate it. And uh, there we have a 20.